First open in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Today we've got an NFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Detroit Lions. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Lions offense set to take over. Drive starts with a run from Gibbs. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards on the gain. A great start for this offense. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. Lot of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now it's gone. complete and I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there silently wondering does this meet the level of grounding fortunately he did have a receiver in the area but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties second and ten back to throw gone that's caught. It's Sam Reporter. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. I know sometimes we can get forward when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles. Because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 32-yard line. 15 yards there on the catch and run. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. They'll fake the give. Now gone. He's got right on the short throw. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 14. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. From the red zone now, Goff. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They had a good chance to get the first points of the game on the board, but what a great job defensively getting a hand in there, knocking it away, and preventing that first touchdown. Now a second and ten. Montgomery back to the ground. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Throwing on third, gone. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. 
Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. This just 32 yards officially from the right hash. Badgley able to knock this one through, and the Lions are going to take a 3 0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here's Devin Tompkins on the return. And he returns this to the 22. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10. At their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, the first play of the game going to be intercepted. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. After the interception, here's Golf. Over the middle and taken in by Laporta. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. This is second and eight. Now Montgomery. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snapped, but what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, and ends up spilling it for a loss. Gone. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Badgley able to punch this one through, and that will make it 6 to nothing. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They find themselves down here after an interception on their opening drive led to a field goal, but all in all, you'd have to say fortunate to be only down six. Yeah, and you know how teams huddle on the sideline before they come out on the field in between series? Guaranteed what's said there is, guess what, guys? We take this ball, move it downfield, and put it in the end zone, we're right back to even. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play 
never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Well, that's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. First down, here's White. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Here's a second and eight. Opting to run again here with White. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here. So it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. They'll come up now, third and nine. To throw, Mayfield. He'll fire deep, looking for more. And that will be incomplete. They weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Lions will take over. And Detroit back in possession of the football. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Goff now to throw. That is caught. And he is going to have the Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, We'll call this play significant. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Going up the gut, Montgomery. Antoine Winfield up from the secondary with the tackle. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now second and nine. Golf. That's complete to the portal. 
And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Here's Goff now on second down. And a loose football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think they should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Second quarter action now from Detroit, and it's the homestanding Lions who have the football. As they've got it with a first and ten. Montgomery on the counter and not a lot of daylight not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage brings up second down the running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half and I don't think it's all been his fault his offensive line hasn't given him much space a loss results there officially nothing on that last run they'll try again second and ten out of the gun they'll give to Gibbs and little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's Goff. And that is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Back deep for the Bucks is Devin Tompkins. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Tampa Bay offense set to go again. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try to force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? Alex Anzalone from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And when you go five wide like they just did there, you can't really max protect, can you? No, you cannot. What you're hoping is that by going five wide, you're forcing the defense into coverage. And if you do that, you get a chance to find some people downfield. But if they audible themselves and go into a blitz, then it's going to happen right now. Very right side. <laughs> exactly right. Turn about. Of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw, and the throw there going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there.
They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Lions will have excellent field position here as they take over first and 10. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns, you know? Maybe something to press it a little bit. This might be the case. Levante David in on the tackle. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll leave him with a third and two. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out in the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Third and two, gone. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they get five there on third and two. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They work now on second and nine. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for Detroit. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Now a play fake, and it's gone. And he's got it. And the Lions are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Montgomery. We'll take this one in. It's a Lions touchdown. So the toss play effective even down here near the goal line. Again, you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon. And this time, he had the speed to win that race. Extra point by Badgley up and good. And the lead now stands at 13. Kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. They find themselves down 13-0 here as they try to get things started offensively. First and 10. Here's Mayfield. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. And he 
He's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And this may be the one to build on right here. It's the second quarter. They've got nothing on the scoreboard as of yet. They need to put something together, and this is a good start as they get the completion there for good yardage and a first down. They'll go up the middle with White. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing Mayfield. He completes it right side of White. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. One where you see the grass or on the field turf, the rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now over three. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run, pass, mix, and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. St. Brown in motion right. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as he'll be brought down at the 42-yard line. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league, no question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains, but it was enough to get them a first down. Continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Now golf. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. The Lions on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Goff now looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 44-yard line. A strong pickup of 11 keeps their drive alive. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. And off comes to Montgomery. Dances by him. And he's going to have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Three, 
Now Goff on first down. Going underneath, Gibbs has it. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession, but the coverage held. It goes incomplete. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try, and this will be a 45-yard attempt. Badgley's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. Take it in at the goal line. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive, and they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left. More than it. Now Mayfield lost the football, but fortunately he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. So they keep the football, but now face second and long. Mayfield looks to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. On third down, a run from White. And down he'll go at the 25. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's Jake Camarda now. Fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. 35 yards that time on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Here's Goff. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. The Lions now are going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Yeah. 
second down and a little more than a yard here. Here's gone. Shane Brown making the catch on the yard run. The Lions quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts. And with half time on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Goff now looks to throw. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. Nice brought down. And remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. That's good for 28 yards. So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. In the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense has thrown at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive. But get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. At this point in the game and the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. From the 21, it's second and 10. To throw, Mayfield. That throw right side here going to be incomplete. have punted four times already and they're staring at a fifth barring a conversion here on third down Mayfield and that's incomplete well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half so much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter still off target throws no rhythm throwing the football and obviously no touchdown scored in this game here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Taking it about the 36. We'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10. At their own 43. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll let this go deep for St. Brown. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. And that's one of the few things that has not gone right for this offense so far. They've had their share of big plays. That was nearly another. But somehow, he just couldn't squeeze it. On second down, here's Gibbs. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Five yards. Now it's third and five. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Goff now to throw. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. 
And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the, at the 15 yard line. Not too bad. So out come the Bucks now. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now a give up the middle. This is White, and he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Mayfield off the play fake. A throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. Another shot now for this Lions offense. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. McGough and Williams hooking up there for a Lions first. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. Credit Yaya Diaby with a stop. Second and nine from the 44. Now gone. And that's incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there was no way that ball was going to be caught. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Here's Goff. Touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Normally, being a big bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten.
That's complete to the Porta. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it, and the Buccaneers are going to take possession here at their own three-yard line. The drive starts with a run by White. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And that run there does nothing but juice who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big-time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. A well, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. have punted four times already and they're staring at a fifth barring a conversion here on third down. A throw there but that's going to wind up incomplete. And I thought he had that one and that was nearly a big third down conversion to get this drive some life. Instead they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 39-yard line. To Montgomery to begin the drive. 53 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. This second and four. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. They'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where a low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. On first and ten, here's Gibbs. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And a nice one. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 41. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. 
A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Give him two on the play there. And the Lions are going to have a first. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle, and that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. Throwing on third, golf. And to find the open man, that's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 15-yard line. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Back to throw. Golf. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 43 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive is eating up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. They'll run with Montgomery, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. David Montgomery, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Lions have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From the end zone, here's Devin Tompkins. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. Ah, just what silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny, I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario, like, what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big, you really have, like, one possession left, and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter. But do they? 
and he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run to have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. That's just his second catch of the game. They wanted to keep him silent. They have kept him silent. Defensive football 101. Don't let the best player on offense beat you. Take him out of the game. They've done a great job of doing that. On first and 10, Mayfield. He's got right here. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Now this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On second down, they'll run with White. And the Buccaneers are going to be set up with a first and goal as strong running gets them to the nine-yard line. What a game this defense continues to play, huh? Yeah, they've been aggressive from the first snap, and they've controlled this ball game. But right now, if you're on the other side of the ball, you've got to match that aggressiveness. No points so far in this game. Moving the football, got to be that way to go against them and try and get some points on the board. And I'm curious on the defensive side, if they stay aggressive, because you know they want to pitch this shutout. Yeah, they have to be aggressive, but they also have to be smart about it as well, because one mistake can turn into six points. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. They keep it on the ground. White again. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Rashad White, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Here's Raymond bringing it out. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And they got to be pleased with this. He brings it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Now that's the kind of return you're looking for. To get to that spot on the field, that allows you to do a lot of things on offense. Off in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at the 40. He'll begin by dropping it off to Montgomery. We'll get this up to about the 44. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Back to Montgomery on second down. And they'll hold him to three there as he takes this up to the 47. 
Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On third down, they go Montgomery. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 74 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. On second down, Montgomery. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. And it's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he stopped immediately there. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Goff. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And almost, but not quite. Needed 10, he got nine. Fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They go ahead and snap it. Gone. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Here's Mayfield. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Chris Godwin, 70 yards. And the Bucs have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. You've got to understand situational football because they're playing with the lead here late in the ball game. So the back defender has got to be as deep as the deepest receiver. Keep everything in front of you, rally up and make the play. Yeah, you would think they had the three-score lead. Now it's down to two, but three-score lead here late that they wouldn't give up a big pass play like that, but they did.
So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Lions are able to cover this one up. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. Now he's into the clear again. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. David Montgomery, 38 yards. And the Lions are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. We see this a lot on third and short yardage, especially down here in the red zone. They're going to sell out to stop the run, try and hold them to a field goal. But once the running back gets past the first wave, the resistance can evaporate after that. And he not only picks up the first, but he takes it all the way into the end zone. team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain? Or did they take advantage of this spot? to take a big shot downfield. Mayfield now on second down. And this is incomplete. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give a scotch of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Mayfield from the gun on third down. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee.
Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf, and that is to defend your home turf, and today that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says, the mission for the season, defend our home field every time, split on the road, and we'll be in the playoffs. That's why defending the home field is vital. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard